Tranquilo. Shanavra. It's been an year that my parents were abducted in their pajamas from their home. Pushimba pyjama. A year has passed, but actually one long day has passed that feels like an eternity. Today marks a year since the war. Of course, we know about displacement to displacement and from one catastrophe to another. It's been a year since so many Israelis were taken, kidnapped by Hamas, and they're still there. October 7, 2024, marking one year of war between Israel and Hamas. This was the day last year when Palestinian Hamas militants barged into Israel. killing 1,200 people and taking about 250 hostage. Hamas believed Israel would collapse after the October 7 attack. Instead, over the past year, Israel responded with a devastating onslaught on Gaza. Causing widespread casualties and destruction. The Israel-Hamas conflict resulted in the deaths of over 42,000 civilians in Gaza. 726 Israeli soldiers died in combat. This gruesome war that began in Gaza a year ago has expanded across West Asia, with Israel fighting countries and groups far from its borders. It has now become a direct confrontation between Israel and its Western allies on one side and Iran and its proxies on the other. Iran's defensive posture has taken several hits over the past year as Israel waged war on Hamas in Gaza launched airstrikes against the Houthis in Yemen and wiped out almost all top Hezbollah leaders in Lebanon, including its chief, Hassan Nasrallah. All three groups, along with militias in Iraq and Syria, make up Iran's so-called axis of resistance. A network of allied groups established down the decades to insulate Tehran from regional threats. However, amid all this, Iran's evolving nuclear program remains its regime's biggest achievement. So, if the axis of resistance is weakening its power, could Iran decide to step up its nuclear weapons program? Republican presidential candidate for the White House, Donald Trump, suggests Israel strike Iran's nuclear facilities in response to the recent missile barrage. We, we have to be totally prepared. We have to be absolutely prepared. But when they asked him that question, the answer should have been, hit the nuclear first and worry about the rest later. And uh, that's where they should, that's what they, if they're going to do it, if they're going to do it, they're going to do it, but we'll find out whatever their plans are. Biden, however, is urging a proportional response. I think there's things... That... We'll be discussing with the Israelis what they're going to do, but they have, all seven of us agree that they have a right to respond, but they should respond in proportion. Why is Israel worried about Iran's nuclear ambitions? Will Israel attack Iran's nuclear sites anytime soon? What is the current status of Iran's nuclear program? And which all countries have nuclear arsenal?
On the 1st of October this year, Iran launched a major missile attack on Israel, firing nearly 200 projectiles. The move underscored the deepening hostility between the two nations. While Israel said that its advanced defense systems managed to intercept the majority of the projectiles, the attack raised alarm across the region and beyond. This missile barrage is the second significant strike from Iran this year, following an earlier attack in April 2024. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu responded with a warning that Iran would pay as US President Joe Biden urged restraint. Analysts have said that with Iran's proxy fighters weakening and its conventional weapons proving insufficient, Tehran may be closer than ever to crossing the threshold and building a nuclear weapon. Having successfully fended off Iran's volley of ballistic missiles with America's help, Israel is confronting a dilemma at the moment. It has vowed to retaliate. But attacking Iran's nuclear program could lay the groundwork for a sustained direct war between the two. And if Israel doesn't bomb the nuclear facilities, it will leave intact the one weapon that an injured theocracy will need to deter future Israeli actions. Will Israel, which is occupied on multiple fronts, attack Iran's nuclear facilities? I think that uh, to attack right now Israel alone, the nuclear facilities, even though the persuasion, especially among Netanyahu, could be high, would be a mistake. Because Israel alone may not be may not be possible to make the damage that is really needed to halt the Iranian program for quite a number of years, three or four years. Uh, for that, Israel should do it with the United States jointly. I don't think the United States would join for Israel, and I think the private uh, advice is not to do so. So that's a problem. Iran's nuclear program has been the subject of concern for many global powers, particularly Israel, which views Iran's growing nuclear potential as an existential threat. Iran is believed to have nuclear and uranium enrichment sites across the country. Tehran did promise restrictions on its nuclear activities in exchange for relief from international sanctions under a 2015 deal with world powers. The agreement fell apart after then-US President Donald Trump pulled out in 2018. Iran too abandoned the restrictions. Since then, Iran has been expanding its uranium enrichment program. Experts suggest that Iran's breakout time, the time needed to produce enough enriched uranium for a nuclear bomb, is now down to just a few weeks. For Israel, they have multiple, multiple options. Uh, one uh, uh, possible option could be the um, uh, uh, Iranian uh, uh, nuclear uh, nuclear facilities. I'm not sure to how uh, to uh, how much uh, backing or support they can count on from the international community because the ramifications of um, um, uh, um, um, the 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 impact of uh, hitting an Iranian facility could be massive. So um, uh, uh, it's really up to Israel and the multiple options they have, but they do have uh, many many options regarding how they choose to re uh, retaliate and uh, uh, and uh, uh, strike Iranian uh, Iranian uh, uh, infrastructure. According to the UN watchdog International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, Iran is enriching uranium up to 60% fissile purity, close to 90% of weapons grade, at two sites. For 22 years, the locus of Israel's attention and Washington's in Iran has been the Natanz nuclear enrichment plant. 
Sands is at the heart of Iran's enrichment program on a plane outside the Shiite Muslim holy city of Qom, south of Tehran. It has two plants, the underground fuel enrichment plant and the above ground pilot fuel enrichment plant. As claimed by the Iranian opposition group in 2002, Iran was secretly building a Tanz. Igniting a diplomatic standoff between the West and Iran over its nuclear projects. It's at Natanz that Iran houses centrifuges, a scientific device used to separate fluids, gases or liquids based on the density of the subject. Reportedly, damage has been done to the centrifuges at the plant, including an explosion and power cut in April 2021 that Iran claimed was carried out in an Israeli attack. Fordo is located opposite of Qom. In the 2015 deal, world powers did not allow Iran to enrich at Fordo at all. It is now more than a thousand centrifuges operating there. Iran recently doubled the number of centrifuges installed at Fordo. The US, Britain and France announced in 2009 that Iran had been secretly building Fordo for years and had failed to inform the IAEA. Iran has a large nuclear technology center on the outskirts of Isfahan, its second largest city. The Isfahan facility builds uranium metal, a process that is particularly proliferation sensitive since it can be used to devise the core of a nuclear bomb. After Iran's attack on Israel in April, the latter responded by striking an airbase in Isfahan. Iran built the heavy water research reactor Kondab, originally called Arak. As part of the 2015 deal, construction was halted at Kondab. The reactor's core was removed and filled with concrete to make it unusable. However, Iran has informed the IAEA that it plans to bring the reactor online in 2026. This is Iran's only operating nuclear power plant on the Gulf Coast. Bushir uses Russian fuel that Russia then takes back when it's spent, reducing the proliferation risk. Another potential nuclear threat may be looming in the war between Russia and Ukraine. Russia, which holds the world's largest stockpile of nuclear warheads, unveiled its new nuclear doctrine. Lowering its threshold for nuclear engagement while continuing its invasion of Ukraine. In September this year, Vladimir Putin said Russia would consider an attack from a non-nuclear state that was backed by a nuclear-armed one to be a joint attack. In what could be construed as a threat to use nuclear weapons in the war in Ukraine. Агрессию против России со стороны любого неядерного государства, но с участием или при поддержке ядерного государства предлагается рассматривать как их совместное нападение на Российскую Федерацию. Ukraine is a non-nuclear state that receives military support from the US and other nuclear armed countries. During the 79th UN General Assembly, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky warned that Russian leader Vladimir Putin is planning to attack nuclear power plants in his country, warning of catastrophic consequences. 
since Russia can't defeat our people's resistance on the battlefield, Putin is looking for other ways to break the Ukrainian spirit. One of his methods is targeting our energy infrastructure. And these are deliberate Russian attacks on our power plants and the entire energy grid. As of today, Russia has destroyed all our thermal power plants and a large part of our hydroelectric capacity. This is how Putin is preparing for winter, hoping to torment millions, millions of Ukrainians, ordinary families, women, children, ordinary towns, ordinary villages. Putin wants to leave them in the dark and called this winter. Putin has threatened the use of nuclear weapons before. Russian ally China also called for calm, with President Xi Jinping warning Putin against using nuclear arms. And then Putin announced the proposed radical expansion. Putin said Russia would consider the possibility of using nuclear weapons if it detected the start of a massive launch of missiles, aircraft and drones into its territory, which presented a critical threat to the country's sovereignty. Since the end of World War II, nuclear armed states have engaged in a policy of deterrence. It is based on the idea that if warring states were to launch major nuclear strikes, it would lead to mutually assured destruction. And then there are also tactical nuclear weapons, which are smaller warheads, designed to destroy targets without widespread radioactive fallout. Let's look at what nuclear warheads are and which countries have them. Nuclear warheads are weapons of mass destruction and can destroy entire cities and kill their residents en masse. They also have long-lasting effects on the environment due to radioactive contamination taking its toll years after the explosion. Nuclear warheads have only been used twice. By the United States in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in World War II. As a weapon of mass destruction, nuclear warheads are part of the defense arsenal of some countries in the world. The number of nuclear warheads decreased significantly after the peak in 1985, when an estimated 63,600 nuclear warheads existed. The potential danger of nuclear weapons has received increased attention after Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. At the beginning of 2024, there were approximately 12,100 nuclear weapons worldwide, and almost 90% of them belonging to two countries, the United States and Russia. Today, nine countries possess nuclear weapons. Here they are on the world map. The United States, Russia, France, China, the United Kingdom, India, Pakistan, Israel and North Korea. But the pace of reductions is slowing down now.
Some of these countries are officially recognized as nuclear weapon states by the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, or NPT, while others are not. NPT is an international agreement that aims to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons and promote peaceful uses of nuclear energy. However, not all countries have signed or ratified the treaty, and some have withdrawn from it. As of January 2024, Russia maintains the highest number of nuclear weapons, with an estimated 5,580 total warheads. The United States is at a close second with 5,044 nuclear weapons. China possesses 500, France has 290, and the United Kingdom has 225. India is in the sixth position with 172 warheads followed by Pakistan with 170 warheads. Israel has 90 warheads and North Korea is in the ninth position with 50 warheads. North Korea may be at the bottom of this list, but its nuclear ambitions are prominent. North Korea has for decades pursued a nuclear weapons program and is believed to have enough fissile material to build dozens of the weapons. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un recently warned that he could use nuclear weapons in potential conflicts with South Korea and the United States. He accused them of provoking North Korea and raising temperatures on the Korean peninsula. Tensions on the Korean peninsula deepened in recent weeks. North Korea had unveiled a facility to produce weapons-grade uranium, a nuclear ingredient, and continued a run of missile tests. There have been several rounds of global diplomacy and talks around ending nuclear weapons due to their destructive power. In July 2017, it even looked as though the world was one step closer to becoming nuclear weapon free. The UN General Assembly voted on the Treaty on Prohibiting Nuclear Weapons. But countries with nuclear weapons, the US, UK, France and Russia, boycotted it and continued to modernize and upgrade their armory. So while the world may have fewer nukes today than it did 39 years ago, the vision of a world free from the threat of nuclear warfare remains distant. <laughs>